Thursday, September 4th. So we have the moon in Virgo energy going void, of course, at 12.07 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We shift into Libra energy at 12.13 p.m., so a very short window of time of instability, of uncertainty, of a little bit of craziness, a little bit of chaos. Of course, that's what happens when the moon goes void. We start second guessing everything. We tend to kind of allow our anxieties, our worries get the best of us. So it is a very good thing that especially coming out of this moon Virgo energy where we just had the new moon, where many of us have fallen into the negative narrative, fallen back into the old world, so to speak. Thank you, Pluto retrograde and Capricorn for that. It is definitely a time where we're going to feel a little bit of darkness in that emotion, in that narrative. But of course, as soon as we shift into the Libra energy, energy, we're going to orient to what is light and fluffy. We kind of, I'm going to say, pull ourselves back from the depths of those darknesses and we attempt to kind of focus on what is good, what is working, what is light, what is happy, what is fluffy. But of course, with the moon in Libra, our whole point is to find peace, harmony, balance within ourselves, within our heart and our head. But we tend to do so by exploring the extremes. And we're definitely going to have a little bit of a taste of that. Because in the backdrop of all of this going on here today, Mars, the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our anger, will be on the move, moving out of the Gemini energy, but not before he has a little bit of a, let's just call it, last hurrah of intensity in that mental plane. Mars is going to be shifting into cancer energy. So of course, there's an astral forecast for this. If you want to take a listen, bust out your Virgo season e-guide, capture the mood, the attitude of what you're focused on, what it is that's kind of fueling the fire, so to speak, whether it's passion, excitement, inspiration, or aggression, agitation, a little bit of anger. Both are very good energies for major changes to take place. And of course, with Mars on the move into that cancer energy, we're definitely going to have to kind of shift into a totally different mood, totally different attitude. If you haven't downloaded your Zodiac forecast for the month ahead, I'm going to recommend you do so as well, just to understand where this particular energy is going to influence your life the most. Again, reminder, we will be visiting these particular topics and themes at the beginning of 2025 due to Mars's upcoming retrograde. So definitely important to capture the major shifts that are taking place inside yourself and in your physical realm. With all of that being said, there are seven different aspects taking place here to a relatively quiet day in the cosmos. I say that with a little bit of hesit hesitancy because there's nothing quiet about the astrology going on as of late. Anywho, five of those aspects are going to involve the moon, the ones that don't involve Mars. And as you know, as we end a particular sign, the 29th critical crisis de degree is no joke, and the zero degree of a brand new chapter is no joke as well. So definitely some interesting turns of emotion, of mind space, and of events coming at us here today. While the moon is still in Virgo energy, again, tapping into the new moon energy that we're still kind of feeding off of, there's still no illumination of the moon in the sky. We're sitting in the darkness. We're kind of bringing things to an end to a close in order to build something new in the place of the things that, of course, we've already identified we can no longer pour into. The moon in this Virgo energy focused on the problems so that we can fix them, heal them, repair them. We will be having an interaction very early with Mercury. Mercury rules over the Virgo energy, but of course, Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, currently still in his post-retrograde fog, but in the heart and soul of Zodiac of Leo energy. So this is a good interaction. It means that our heart and our head trying to get on the same page, they're definitely talking about the same thing. They're in the same book. They're in the same chapter. Now we're trying to meet each other on that same page. Emotionally speaking, we are very analytical as far as the moves that need to be made in order for us to get to where it is that we desire to be. That's where Mercury comes in. He's in the heart and soul of the Zodiac, Leo energy. We're listening to our heart space. There's a want, need, and desire to kind of pursue a new path, pursue new goals, wishes, and dreams. The moon in Virgo energy, helping us to analyze how it is that we're actually going to get there. The moon in Virgo energy, then going to trine, beautiful interaction with Uranus, the great awakener, who is now retrograde in Taurus energy. 
This is earth on earth action. This is what gives us our trine. A trine is a gentle nudge in the right direction. Uranus brings clarity from the higher realms of intelligence. The Virgo energy takes that higher form of intelligence and puts it into logical, practical terms that are lower level intellect that rules over our ego self can actually articulate, can actually understand. Because this is earth energies, we're still very heavy, very weighted, very present in our physical bodies, focused on our physical environment and what is blocking us from moving on, moving forward. Though that particular aha moment, that awareness is going to set the tone on where adjustments need to be made to set ourselves free from old constructs, old structures, old roles, old responsibilities, the old world, basically that the old version of self has created and how to free ourselves up to anchor in this new version of self, clearing away those remnants, that debris, and actually clearing the space for us to move on, move forward with this new pursuit of goals, visions, dreams, and happiness. Now the moon in Virgo energy, of course, coming to the final degrees of this Virgo energy means that we're going to directly oppose Neptune, who was retrograde at the 29th critical crisis karmic degree of his rulership in Pisces energy. Virgo and Pisces share the healing axis. Emotionally speaking, the Virgo energy is trying to heal the physical form, physical environment, physical body, and the mental plane. The Piscean energy that Neptune, our intuition, our spirituality, our dreams, our creativity is anchored in. The Pisces energy is trying to heal the emotional and spiritual realm. This opposition means that we're sitting across the table, emotionally speaking, from confusion. Neptune is creating a layer of fog, a layer of confusion on what the goal, the dream, the vision actually is right now. Because when we kind of tap into the logical, practical, analytical mindset of our ego selves, there is no dreams. There is just what is already in existence. It is our imagination, our creativity, our ability to dream that actually instills hopes, wishes, and dreams in us. And we have to strike a balance. We can't be so literal that we only think that what we're seeing is what is possible for us. And we can't be too over imaginative to think that again, without the work, without the structure, without a little bit of energy and effort in the physical realm that our dreams are just gonna manifest just because we want them to. This is a little bit of a balanced situation where we have to understand that in order to get to where it is that we wanna be, we have to make adjustments in the physical realm currently with the issues that again are banging our head against the wall about on how it is that we're going to put some of these circumstances behind us. The moon then gets into the boxing ring, squares off with Mars. Mars is at the final degree of Gemini energy. Virgo energy and Gemini energy have Mercury as their common ruler. Mars in this Gemini energy, we can expect agitation, frustration, ants in our pants. We can expect a pressure in our headspace, an agitation in our heart space. We are highlighting the tension and the conflict of the growing pains, the adjustment period that we are all going through. Again, this is the final hurrah of Mars. This is the last aspect that Mars will be making in this Gemini energy, but pay attention to just keep this in the back of your mind. We have the moon in Virgo entering into the square to fight it out with Mars in order for us to realize, emotionally speaking, where we need to make adjustments in our physical realm in order to clear the path for us to pursue Mars energy, new passions, goals, and dreams. We're planning, we're strategizing in the Gemini energy. Pay attention. We're going to bring this full circle here in just a second. The moon in Virgo energy, then going to trine beautiful interaction with Pluto, the great transformer who is retrograde now in Capricorn energy. Now, the reason why I want to say pay attention is because now we've been thrown back into the old world. This is our final hurrah of Pluto illuminating the old world structures, the old world foundation, roles, responsibilities, mindset, and emotions that belong in the past. This is our last hurrah of bringing finality, bringing completion to our physical realm. The moon in Virgo energy trying to make adjustments to our mood, to our attitude, to our perspective, to our understanding. Because again, the shift has to happen in our mental plane first, our heart 
playing second. Those two need to get in agreement, get in alignment before we can make any kind of physical changes to the physical realm. So this is intensifying the areas of our lives that we could do better, that need a little bit of improvement, need a little bit of adjustment, that need a little bit of change and transformation in order for us to, again, close the door on some of the tough love life lessons that we've been learning the hard way. Thank you, Pluto, since 2008. Now, this is the point in time, 12.07 p.m., that the moon is going to go void, of course. We sit in that for a couple of minutes, lock into the Libra energy at 12.13 p.m. The reason why I said earlier, pay attention, is for this reason and this reason alone. Mars now, at still at the final degrees of Gemini energy, is going to be making a harsh interaction with Pluto. Pluto, at the very last degrees of Capricorn energy, we have the God of War and the God of Underworld going at it with each other at the final degrees. Now, this is the last aspect. I know I said earlier that this was the last aspect that Mars was going to make. That was under the moon in Virgo energy. I should have clarified that. Now we're in Libra energy. So what happens when the moon is in Libra? We want everyone to get along. We want everybody to be happy. We want everybody to be on the same page. We want happiness and joy and fairness and justice to be served. So now we're under a different influence. This is why things, again, we jump into this moon and Libra energy. The scales get tipped, not in our favor. The very first aspect that's taking place under this Libra influence is Mars and Pluto going at each other. This is going to stir up a lot of frustration, a lot of tension, a lot of aggression, a lot of edginess. Again, final degrees of Gemini energy, a lot of pressure in the head. It's going to feel like we can feel our heart beating out of our chest. Go ahead, take a listen to the Ascension forecast that I put out there for this week to understand where the energy is going to manifest in the physical body. Anger rising to the surface, competitiveness rising to the surface, jealousy, betrayal, all of these ugly thoughts, these ugly emotions, these ugly experiences that we've all had rising to the surface. Why? Because Pluto is the great transformer. We turn pain into power. We turn darkness into light. There is no more aggressive force than you can get than the God of war and the God of the underworld bringing up all this darkness, bringing it, highlighting it in the mental plane, Gemini energy in order for us to destroy it. Pluto, what are we destroying? The past, the past pain, the past trauma that has us locked in the old world. That is the Capricorn energy that Pluto is now retrograde in. That is a huge energy, not going to feel good. It's going to highlight for us where it is that we have certain aspects that need to be kind of resolved before we can actually move on. This is us kind of, I'm going to say, facing our shadow selves, sitting in it, really absorbing all of the not so nice topics and themes, the not so nice thoughts and feelings, the not so nice situations and circumstances that we've already lived through that we're learning to integrate those particular pains into power. And of course, we have to sit in the funk. We have to get real and raw with our darkness. That is the shadow work in order for us to flip the script, to turn it into something empowering. That's what Pluto does. So that is not going to feel good, okay? We're going to sit in that. And then what happens? 3.47 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Mars moves into Cancer Energy totally different vibe. It's a cardinal energy. It's time to initiate a new path, a new direction, time to drop into the heart space, time to fight, defend, and protect what it is that we've already built, what it is that actually matters to us. We are going to receive huge amounts of intuitive insight on what we need to do from here to either continue to build up the boundaries that have kept us safe and kept us away from certain people, places, and things, and essentially harm, or put us in a situation to realize now what needs to be built. Either way, this is going to be a major day of fluctuating energies, a major day of feeling real, raw, and vulnerable in our current present moment and circumstances in order for us to gain a totally different perspective on what it is that we need to do to close the door to the past and start building a strong enough foundation to house the goals, the visions, the dreams of the future.